um, hi everybody. Um, just to make sure you can see my video, right? It's all working. See slides. So cool. All right. So um, I'm Artyoms. I'm the co-founder of Splitgraph, together with uh, Miles, who's also in the call tonight or today, depending where you are. And uh, I'm going to open up with a demo. Now, um, what I have right here is dBeaver. dBeaver is a database client. Um, we didn't change it, didn't modify it in any way. This is a vanilla version, and um, it's connected to something that we call the uh, DDN. So I'll just open it up right now. Um, here's the connection parameters. It's a plain Postgres connection. It's a public endpoint. And here's the port. Here's my credentials. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, just run a query. So really what you see here, you know, is we're running a join across two tables. The first table is the COVID cases in the city of Chicago. Second is Cambridge Mass. Uh, we join them sort of on uh, the dates just get them lined up side by side I'm going to run that query uh, second try because we do drop connections after a while if they're idle um, so here we go that's the results now by that point you might be feeling kind of underwhelmed because the guy shows up and runs a join in a database what is this like a mongo meetup or something but um here's something interesting so these tables and schemas um they aren't actually real so I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to go over to our website and if I paste this thing into the address bar uh, we'll go over and uh, get the sort of the data sets home page on split graph I'm not going to type it in because you'll see my address bar it's history etc but um there it is um, so this is the data set we have about 40,000 of them and any one of them you can reference via SQL over this endpoint uh, over there uh, not only that you know we can just as an example, this is my favorite data set by far. Um, the city of Mesa, Arizona has a list of light fixtures, uh, which we can use, which we can query as well. So, and I'll use that sort of as a good example of another capability. So, um, because we kind of don't try and break the PG wire protocol abstraction, you get this um, support for geospatial data types. So you can take the latitude and the longitude from this data set, uh, turn it into a PostGIS um, point and plot it because um, dBeaver is kind of good at that. You know, I can go ahead and select stuff from my query result and uh, get it plotted right here. Um, so what's even worse is that these data sets aren't actually hosted by us. So we proxy them. Um, and if I go back a few, um, a few data sets, this is the uh, COVID cases data set. I can click through to the um, data source. In this case, this is this location here. It's going to open up to here. So this is the city of Chicago data portal. There is um, a few hundred of these, uh, mostly run by US governments. There's a few in Europe and uh, they're mostly powered by a single piece of software called Socrata. Uh, what we do is we index them all and we make them available of this one single um, endpoint and we proxy queries to them. So you can see here there's an API you can query. So what I'm going to do today is find my slides again and uh, also talk to you about Kind of how this thing works in the background um, as well as how you two can query through clickhouse over um, odbc so robert kind of gave an intro on them um, you know how the odbc table function odbc engine works we actually do try and use it here all right so uh split graph is actually two products so what i showed you just now is kind of this idea of a um, um, database proxy we call it data delivery network it's really been called many things. So um, if you're a big foreign fan of like Gartner magic quadrants, you refer terms data mesh or data fabric. It's also called data virtualization, data federation. But the idea is simply, you know, you have sort of this database that pretends to be a database and actually forwards queries to backend data sources in the background. Together with that, you also have a data catalog. So you saw this right here, right? This is a um, kind of a way to discover data sets. Um, but the thing about Splitgraph is we originally were built with this idea of um, making something that kind of works like a mashup of Git, Docker, and um, you know Unix file system mounting essentially. It was inspired by a bunch of different ideas. And the core concept is um, it lets you package data sets into so-called self-contained version data images, kind of like you know you have Docker, Docker files, um, Docker images. We also let you do, you know, which lets you use something called split files to build these images. Um, it's powered by Postgres, so that really means that it works with most things that use Postgres. So you can connect to it with um, you know, BI tools, dashboards, clients, other apps. And Splitgraph Cloud itself, the thing I showed, 
is like what was it wasn't the beginning a split graph peer so if you have you know git you probably have some sort of a um, you know git remote an idea of decentralization so you can do you know you can share these split graph data sets with other split graph engines on the split graph instances or you can share them push it out on split graph cloud and then we kind of started thinking more about along the lines of this data federation so just to sort of show you what happened just now as a sort of quick framing device. So we were here, we were the beaver, we sent up a query and we shipped it off all the way over the over this uh, pipe to an external data source. Now this is not the only thing you can kind of query over the single endpoint. So like I said, you can take a data set, snapshot it, upload it to the graph, that's also kind of over there. You can connect it to backend data sources, so uh, analytical DBs, warehouses, um, some SaaS services, uh, those that you know have a query API. Um, it's kind of powered by uh, SGR, and um, you know SGR is this split graph core is the open core split graph that you can find on GitHub. And around that, we built a bunch of scaffolding. But the the main technology here that enables all of this is um, Postgres foreign data wrappers. So PG foreign data wrappers are kind of this way to create a table on your local um, PG instance that looks like a table, but actually it can forward queries to other data sources. And it's pretty clever. So you can do things like um, push downs, uh, you can push down joins, you can push down aggregations, push down filters. Um, and around that we build kind of a lot of orchestration layers to make this experience of, you know, you can put in a query reference, some data set and have data come back over a PG wire protocol. And because we do query rewriting, so we grab these queries and you know get to inspect and intercept them, we can do a lot of other things. So things like access control, we can kind of look at the query and see if it has sensitive columns and drop them or whatever. Um, you have things like caching and um, uh, you know problems, etc. So that's enough about split graph. This is a click house meetup, and uh, what I'm going to talk about is um, how you can use ClickHouse's ODBC functionality to actually query, um, first of all, we'll query the single endpoint. So we'll use the um, ODBC table function for that. And then we'll uh, try something else. So we'll try and reproduce this join that I did in the beginning. Um, and we'll do that by creating two tables backed by the um, ODBC engine. Uh, after that, I'm going to move on and kind of show you how you can run SplitGraph locally and get all of that, kind of get around our cloud QoS query limits, run it locally, as well as we'll also try playing with a like a snapshotted version data image. So we've got a two million data set, a two million row data set prepared for this. And we'll uh, just do that. Um, so all the code for this is actually in GitHub. Um, over there I have a Docker Compose stack that I'll be using for this. And there's a readme, um, all the configuration files are there as well. So you can um, try and spin it up. So um, to begin, I'm going to kind of pause on this slide for a bit just to give you an overview of um, the architecture for today. So what we did just now, um, kind of in the beginning, you know, I had a, a instance of dBeaver over here, it's not on the slide, but we went up to this playground DDN and said, hey, can you, um, can you run this query for me, can you run this join? And the DDN went off to, you know, this data portal, this data portal got the data, ran the join, came back. Um, so for starters, we're going to do something similar with ClickHouse. We'll try it out on one data set. Um, and uh, the setup I have here is on my machine, I have running two containers. The first one is the official Yandex ClickHouse client, client image. Second one is ClickHouse server. Um, I use Yandex's image, and I use actually Altenis tutorial to install um, Unix ODBC on it. It's very straightforward, just a couple of lines like of apt-get installs and configs. What we can do now is um, send over a query over a ClickHouse reference an ODBC table that's going to go all the way to the server, go to this um, process that's running in this container. It's kind of a separate process from ClickHouse for just stability purposes, but it links to the Unix ODBC library. And that's going to translate this into the PGWire protocol and go over to split graph and you know get the data. This is going to come, go over like a REST API, but obviously we don't want that. So we'll translate it to PGWire and uh, back to ClickHouse. All right, so um, this is not, not another thing of you know to explain. Um, we didn't write an ODBC driver. This is a normal PG connection. So if you have a PG client, you can connect it with that. 
get um, your API key in secret uh, over at our website. Uh, and yeah, so let's start this right now. I will um, do a few things. So we'll, we're going to go over to the city of Chicago data portal again, but in this case, we'll go um, look at their fire stations. So in split graph land, we kind of name these, um, we, we give repositories names essentially. So we use a GitHub like naming system. So we have a namespace or an organization got a uh, repository. Now, if this were like a versioned image, so if it were a Delta Compress snapshot or whatever, this would also have an image hash. But um, in this case, we're going to be querying a live data set. So we're actually, you know, there's no point in having a version here. Uh, Fire stations table, uh, I can click through to this thing, uh, just open it up, show you that it's real. And uh, yeah, so I lost my slides again. Actually, I don't think they're necessary at this point. Oh yeah, so that's the that's a query. It's fairly straightforward. Um, we're using this ODBC table function, which Robert mentioned in the beginning. The idea of table functions. Uh, its syntax is simple. We have uh, this DSN, this connection string. So I set this up right here. We have uh, the repository name. So in split graph, we kind of overload the idea of a schema, and uh, we treat um, repositories as schemas. Uh, you may have noticed this here, right? So as a quick aside. Um, we, we could kind of use this, but also you might notice that um, these are actually kind of, these are split graph repositories. And uh, the way we implement that is uh, because we get to intercept queries, we can actually rewrite them and we can do something cool with them. So when DB wakes up and says, hi, uh, give me all your tables, we're under no obligation to actually give it any real tables. Uh, so in this case, you know, since I'm logged in as myself, I've got, um, I've got my own data sets here got some split graph data here, and I've got all these data portals. And these are only the things that we kind of bookmarked, but you know, we can query any others just by uh, issuing a query. So um, I'm going to run this right now. Somewhere over here is my list of queries. I shall grab this one. This is straightforward. It's going to disconnect, I think, because of connections now. Yeah. So the reason this happens is because uh, this is a public instance, and if there is a like a, like a lingering connection that we um, you know, that is idling, we kind of terminate that eventually after a few minutes. But yeah. So what happened is something you would expect. We went over to the City of Chicago data portal, used their API to get the fire station data, got back, um, and you know the ClickHouse instance thinks that is querying an ODBC table. It's actually speaking to this. Um, open data portal. All right, so now I could stop here. This is uh, pretty good already, but um, it sometimes can, call, can have issues. So like Robert said, ODBC support isn't uh, entirely production ready. Um, there are going to be bugs, but they're fairly easy to work around. Uh, so we uh, are going to show you one of them right now. Um, we're going to try and reproduce this join that we did in the beginning. So if you remember, we started off by uh, in joining Chicago and Cambridge mass data portals. But the problem is uh, there's a bit of a mismatch in the way we serialize dates and um, click has passes them. And that's, you know, that's not a big issue. We can fix that. I'll show you how. And I'll also use this sort of to discuss another thing. Now, when I said we go over and do a join on the split graph DDN, how exactly does this work um, if you know foreign tables are involved? And the answer is, Postgres doesn't really care that um, these are foreign tables uh, in the beginning. So it goes over to the first table and says, "Hi, I'm going to do a scan through you. Um, you know, here's the filters, here's the columns that I want." And the table can, comes back and says, "Okay, well, this is the cost of starting a scan, and it's going to be larger for querying remote data because." you know, this licensee and, you know, it's the cost of, cost of iterating through a scan. And using this, this information, Postgres is going to um, choose between one of the few joins um, that it can run and then it's going to execute them. Uh, it can get crazier. So imagine, for example, you have a, um, you have two foreign tables that are backed by the same sort of uh, data source or the same foreign server. Um, so you won't be able to see this in this case. Um, we kind of, each of these data sets are a separate self-contained API, but imagine you're connecting to something like um, Snowflake or any other data warehouse. 
So if you're running a join between two foreign tables that point to the same data source, and uh, uh, if your data warehouse support joins, which I really hope it does, then what you can do is um, well, Postgres will push this join down and run into on the warehouse. Um, now, what we're going to be doing now is trying to reproduce this initial query that I showed up, that I showed uh, over here on ClickHouse. So we'll create two tables. Uh, they're going to be backed by the ODBC engine this time. And uh, we'll try and run join between them. Now, because we can't yet push the join down through sort of this ODBC pipe, um, ClickHouse is going to go um, all the way here. So query the DDN, get the first data set, come back, query the second data set, come back, and run the join on ClickHouse. Um, sometimes this is desirable. Sometimes it might not be desirable. It kind of depends on your um, you know, bandwidth uh, latency trade-offs that you want to do. Um, but we'll eventually have a way to solve this. We're thinking we'll uh, solve it with views. So we'll let you define views or aliases on the DDN. And you'll be able to say, uh, create view something as select star from A join B. And then when something queries this view, then we'll pull the queries. Uh, this kind of has some other cool applications. So uh, imagine, uh, imagine, talking, imagine using something like DBT to build a view. So if you're doing modeling across data warehouses, if you're in a multi-warehouse situation, you can use DBT to build a model but you don't have to materialize it and you can put it in a split graph and kind of query data through that model and have query federation like that. And that's story for another time. Um, right now we're going to keep it really simple. So over here I'm going to create two tables uh, backed by the ODBC engine. So you get this a similar syntax. You've got your connection string, uh, data set name, table name. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, instead of uh, letting the ODBC table function do schema inference itself, I'm going to say, okay, I'll just give me the thing as strings and I'll parse them myself. So let me do that real quick as well. That's the second table and that's our query. So it started running, I'll just pause it here. Um, so just to compare, you know, the things we saw in the, in the uh, dBeaver demo when we, when we were speaking to the uh, Postgres instance directly. Uh, table one, join table two on date. And we are doing essentially the same here. By this point, we don't really mind that these tables are proxies of a proxy or whatever. Uh, we'll just do a normal join. Um, we're going to use ClickHouse's parsing to um, get the data kind of, uh, get some more robust data parsing. And here's the results. Another cool thing we do is we do um, we do caching, so we don't want to overwhelm the backend government data portal. So if we want to run this again, it's going to be faster because uh, on the split graph DDN we hash the query AST and we uh, we just cache the results. All right, so that was the DDN. Now up until this point, I was talking about how to query live data through this proxy. But um, I mentioned in the beginning, we, we do have some query limits. So we um, uh, limit queries sort of 10,000 rows of uh, results and 30 seconds of execution. We might review those later. But what you can do is run split graph locally. Uh, and I'll show you what we're going to try and do. So let me just click through to this data set. Uh, so you can see here, if you compare these two, this one says external, this one doesn't. This one says latest. Um, so this is a data image. It's something that I previously built and uploaded split graph. And on this machine, in this window, I actually have a split graph instance running. It wasn't necessary up until this point, um, but you know, it's, it's here now, it's going to be useful for us. Now this is, um, uh, this data set is 26 megabytes large has two million rows and um, what we're going to do is run a query on it through ClickHouse. So my slides are about here. Uh, that's the query. Um, you'll notice that we're still using the ODBC table function but this time we're speaking to the split graph DSN. Uh, again this is also essentially a Postgres instance with a few extra extensions. Uh, it's configured in my ODBC file and um, uh, 
the syntax is the same. So, you know, I put in my repository name, my table name, uh, and a filter. So, uh, what I'm going to do right now is grab this query. So, I'm not running it on ClickHouse just yet. I'm running it on SplitGraph. I could be using any other PG client. This is just a shorthand. But I'll um, show you what SplitGraph would see when we run this query, when um, ClickHouse sends it this query. Uh, so you'll see something interesting here. Uh, we're going to be scanning through two objects. Now, what's an object? Well, when we um, store data in SplitGraph, we don't actually use native PG table format because um, that'll be kind of slow. It's not very good for analytical queries. Um, and we instead use something called CStoreFDW. So this is a an extension that was written by Citus. Um, and it kind of mimics the on-disk format of uh, Apache Parquet or uh, ORC, but it has one advantage. So uh, it lets uh, it lets us store extensions, so PG extension types. So for example, Postgres, I can go and uh, store some geospatial data, share it with others. These files are portable. And uh, what we do is we partition tables into these so-called chunks or fragments. Um, each fragment is a C store of DW file but also each fragment has a um, uh, has an index. So we kind of, so as soon as a query comes in, we can inspect it and we can say, oh, um, this, is, this are the objects that this query will need. And one cool thing we can do is we can decouple storage from execution. So if you're running SplitGraph locally, if you're a data, data scientist you know, with a laptop, you want to query some data, um, you know, kind of use your local compute to do the actual calculation. Um, then you can use this feature and uh, it, is, it is going to download the um, required data in the background. Now I'm not going to do that here. So um, in this case, I actually pre-downloaded this data set and that's just because I don't want to uh, drop off the call, but I'm going to run this thing now in ClickHouse and what happens is something, you know, as you would expect, go to split graph, get the data, come back. So one last thing um, is, this is still kind of slow, uh, you can see here. And the reason is just the sheer amount of um, translation layers we have to go through. So we take the, you know, the C store DW file, we have to query it, get the tuples, um, put the tuples on the wire, shift them over to the ODBC instance, um, you know, shift over to click house. It's going to be slow, but uh, we can easily ingest this whole data, data set into uh, click house as well. I'm going to kick this off now. It's going to take about half a minute, but in the meantime, I'll just um, go to the slide where I have these uh, queries. And this is kind of going to be bringing all this together, right? So we're using the ODBC engine. We're talking to the local split graph instance. We are creating a table that proxies to this split graph instance, and we're just picking some of the columns. Then we are creating a ClickHouse table that mirrors the first table schema. And finally, we just do an insert. If you're a data engineer, this kind of will look familiar. So this is your classic uh, extract, transform, and load. Right, so we're done by this point. Uh, we ingested the data, and I'm just going to show you, um, just to showcase uh, the speed of ClickHouse. We've got the, the ingestion rate here is 57,000 rows a second. Uh, this is going to be, I keep doing that. Let's try this again. And this is going to be much faster. So I'm going to end here. Uh, feel free to check out our GitHub. We have all these examples there. Uh, feel free to um, you know, drop us an email and go to our website, join our Discord, etc., etc. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks. We'll take questions now.